Good morning everyone and welcome to Storytime. My name is Alice and I'm the project manager for children and young people here at Writing on the Wall and I've got a brilliant brilliant story to share with you today. This story is from Patience Agbavi and it's from her book The Infinite. Patience is a poet and an author and I'm so pleased that we get to hear some of her book today. In her book it's all about some characters called the Leaplings and they get to leap around time. So maybe after you have watched this story, you might like to write your own story about leaping through time. You could go forward or backwards. Where might you want to go if you could go anywhere in time? So sit back, relax and enjoy Patience Agbarbi. Hello, I'm Patience Agbarbi, poet and author of The Infinite. I'd like to thank WOW Festival for inviting me to give this reading and also you for attending it. So, you might be wondering like, what The Infinite is about. Well, it's a time travel adventure story and it's told from the perspective of 12 year old Elle, who's the Leapling. And being a Leapling means she was born on the 29th of February, a date that only happens once every four years. But Elle has a very special gift, the ability to leap through time. And on her 12th birthday, she goes on a school trip with her friends to 2048 because she's received a mysterious text. Other leaplings are disappearing in time and Elle has to solve the mystery to save the world. So I hope you're sitting comfortably because I'm going to begin with an extract from chapter one, which is called Elle. Something bad just happened and I want to leap back in time to make it unhappen but you're not supposed to solo leap till your three leap, which is 12 years old for annuals. I won't be three leap until the 29th of February, three days time. I just went out of double geography and now I'm in the corridor. I'm tongue tied and my face is burning red with humiliation and I can still hear Mr. Carter's old creaky voice in my memory. L, where are you going? I checked my watch, 1501. Wednesday 26th of February. I close my eyes to block out the muffled shouts from the classroom, the yellow walls of the corridor, the smell of sweat and all the bad thoughts colliding in my head about the bad thing that happened and getting into trouble for running out of a lesson. I'm thinking about leaping back in time so the bad thing won't happen. I don't mean to leap. That would be wrong. When I have that thought, Another one comes into my mind at the same time. Will Athletics Club still be on tonight? It's usually five o'clock on a Wednesday, but some have said it might be cancelled. I imagine doing running round the track to keep myself calm, and it feels like it's actually happening. My body goes fizzy, charged up like a battery. Something very strange is happening to me. My body isn't any bigger, but it's much stronger. I'm no longer L. I'm L to the power of three. My head begins to spin so fast I stop thinking about running. I try to think about nothing at all, but I've never felt so happy like I could take on the whole world. I clasp my hands tight. Everything goes dark. I hear a door open. Classroom chatter pours out like a tidal wave. I open my eyes. Things slowly come into focus, like my eyes are a camera. I'm sitting on the grass by the school track next to the long jump pit. My watch says 1700. My mouth is a capital O. I just leapt one hour, 59 minutes into the future. I feel dizzy, like I've been in the spin dryer at the laundrette and my skin's still damp. When I try to move, I throw up all over the grass. But it doesn't make me sad. It makes me feel better. I look around me. No one's doing slow jog or high knees. No one's spinning in the discus circle. Athletics really is off tonight. So, nobody saw me appear out of thin air. Nobody saw me leap from the corridor. Only you and I know what just happened. I'm tongue-tied with everyone, except you. It's easier talking to you, because I don't know what you look like or if your eyes are rolling clockwise or anti-clockwise because I said something odd or rude like, how many days have you suffered from acne? 
I'm autistic, so sometimes I'm very direct or say the wrong thing at the wrong time. But I love words, the sound and the shape of them and how they feel on my tongue. And I love sprinting and long jump because it's the closest you get to flying. And when I talk about sprinting and long jump, it's like the words come to life. And I'm pounding down the runway, launching myself into the air. It's the best thing ever. I like it here beside the track. If I was a millionaire, I'd build my house right here. How fast can you run the 100 metres? My PB is 13.12 seconds, which gives me an 89.59% age grade. That means I'm almost in the top 10% in the world for 11 year olds. I want to run in the Olympics and stand a good chance because I'm a leapling with the gift and the Olympics only happen in a leap year. My favourite Olympics is Mexico City 1968. My favourite athlete of all time is Bob Beeman. Bob Beeman made a world record in the long jump of 8.90 metres at the 1968 Olympics. They had to send someone out of the stadium to buy an old-fashioned tape measure so they could measure the jump properly. Mr Branch, my athletics coach, says it was the most political Olympics since 1936 when Jesse Owens got four gold medals and made Hitler leave the stadium. In 1968, Tommy Smith and John Carlos did the Black Power salute wearing black gloves on the medal podium and got suspended from the US team. Dick Fosbury raised his fist during his medal ceremony in solidarity with Black Power. Dick Fosbury was white. He invented a new way of doing the high jump called the Fosbury flop. But the best part of the 1968 Olympics was Bob Beeman's jump. So, basically Elle runs away from school after that and um, on the way she meets her teacher who's called Mrs Siekler who's driving in her car but Elle kind of ignores her because she has to get home in time to, um, to help cook with her, she lives with her grandma. And Elle lives in um, a, a row of houses called the Mushrooms and they're called the Mushrooms because they've got very damp walls, they're very cheap housing and they've got mushrooms coming out of the walls. Um, so the next section is where she's just got home She's reached her front door, number 36. When she comes through the flat door, even though she's out of breath for walking up the stairs, Grandma sings, El, baby, and belle, and looks at me with her what big eyes. Most people just call me El. My full name is El, baby, and belle, et fille. I write it with accents, so people say it properly, but they still get it wrong. Ifie means time in Izon which is a Nigerian language. Bebe Ibele means mouth sweet, as in sweet talking. I like having time as one of my names, and I like sweet talking, except when I'm tongue-tied, and I love L because it's a palindrome like Hannah. It reads the same backwards and forwards. Before she died, Mum called me L after the fashion magazine. Grandma says Mum died before I was born, but that doesn't make sense, does it? Grandma says Mum was in a coma after the car crash, so it was like she was dead. Maybe that's what she means. After Mum died, my dad went back to Nigeria and married someone else. I don't miss my mum or dad, because I don't remember them. Grandma's like a mum to me. She's very short for a grown-up. I was the same size as Grandma two years ago. People say, Elle, you're tall for your age, but they don't know my true age. I'm not 11 going on 50 like Mr Branch says. I'm 2 going on 3. I bet you guess why. I'm a bisextile, a leaper, a leapling. I only celebrate my birthday every four years. This Saturday I'll be three leap and I'm going on a school trip to 2048. We'll be staying at the Time Squad Centre. Only four pupils from my class were chosen. They sent secret letters to our parents six weeks ago and I had to read mine out to Grandma because she can't read or write, but still puts on her glasses like she can. I was so excited and scared, I almost went tongue-tied. My favourite line from the letter was, Elle has been chosen for this trip because she scored the highest for effort in past, present and future for the whole of seventh year. Leaplings are just like annuals, but a tiny percentage of us have the gift. 
I had to swear the oath of secrecy on my Thule birthday after Grandma discovered what made my body fizz. She swore the oath too. The room was round and dark with no windows and whichever way I looked there were people holding hands with each other. I didn't know which way to face. The wall smelled of the woods after it's rained. One voice said my gift was extraordinary. I love that extraordinary means very, very ordinary, but extraordinary means the opposite. Big Ben has worked out that the gift is super rare. Only 0.6% recurring of leaplings have it. If you let him, Big Ben would say 0.6666666. Six, six and keep on going to infinity. Big Ben's in the same class as me at school. He's autistic too. He has short scruffy hair that's blonde and brown at the same time, though he's never had it streaked. A round face and extremely long legs. He corrects Mrs Grayling in double maths on a Tuesday afternoon and she gets cross. His real name is Benedict Novak, which is Polish. Grandma likes his name because it means blessed and her own name is Blessing Ifir. He's called Big Ben because of his height and obsession with timing things. Big Ben has a stopwatch that times things down to two decimal points. He times me doing the 100 metres even when I don't want him to. He can't help it. He times everything and throws chairs when he goes from 0 to 10 on the anger scale. Big Ben's already been excluded from two schools. At his first school, he overturned his desk and books went everywhere. He'd only just started second year but was very strong. He went to the same primary school as me after that. In sixth year, he threw a chair because the teacher told him off for talking when he wasn't. It landed on the teacher's desk and snapped like firewood. Everyone cheered except the teacher and me. I missed him when he left. Intercali International's his last chance. After that, it's the pupil referral unit. That's a school for children who get excluded and they can't find another school to take them on. I worry Big Ben will end up there one day. He never remembers to do time out. When I do time out, I do running around the playground or the athletics track. He doesn't throw chairs at people now though, just at tables or chairs with no one sitting in them. Zero occupancy. Big Ben's favourite car is a Lamborghini Asterion which goes from 0 to 60 in 3 seconds. But his ambition is to time its acceleration down to a nanosecond. That's a billionth of a second. His uncle's a second-hand car dealer. Last year he told Big Ben he'd teach him to drive when he was tall enough. He didn't expect that Ben would grow 6 inches that year. Now Big Ben can drive better than his uncle, even though he's exactly the same age as me, and it's illegal to drive a car until you're 17. Everyone thinks he's my boyfriend, but he's not. I hang out with him because he's clever and kind and times me when I'm running. He says I'm the best sprinter in athletics club because I'm faster than boys the same age. Once I was crying at school because PLMS kept repeating everything I said in a silly voice, so the teacher gave him detention. Big Ben gave me one of his socks straight off his foot. It was dark grey, at least a size 10, and smelled of cheese. I hid it in my bag because people might make more fun of me, but it made me feel much happier. Big Ben doesn't care what people think. He'd never give me perfume or flowers just because I'm a girl. He says, am I your boyfriend a hundred times a day? Grandma's plaiting my hair before bed. I love it when she plaits my hair, even when she cornrows it so tight I can't close my eyes in bed for the first night. She says it must last a long time, so the tighter the better. But it pulls my skin so I look like I've had a facelift. It takes days for my face to feel normal. Tonight, she's doing single plaits, so I can comb them out in the morning. I sit on the floor and she sits on the sofa behind me, combs my hair with the afro comb, then the fine tooth comb to divide it into sections. She massages pomade into my scalp, which smells like tar, but in a good way. Some of the other pomades used to make me sick, so we only buy this one. When I start shuffling on my bottom, shifting from one side to the other, because I find it hard to sit still on the prickly carpet, Grandma sucks her teeth. El baby e belle, you are too ansy pansy. Sit not run all. Grandma likes singing my name. Tonight she's happy. 
I know she's happy because she's singing whilst plaiting my hair and she doesn't have to work hard to pull it tight when she's tired after a day of cleaning because it only has to last till the morning. I'm happy too because it won't feel like a facelift and I'll be able to close my eyes in bed. But when I get into bed and close my eyes, I don't sleep. I worry. I worry Mrs Sietla was so offended I ran away from her. She'll stop being nice to me in school and won't be my favourite teacher anymore. I worry someone will find out about the illegal leap and arrest me and send me to a young offenders unit, which is prison for teens, though I'm not even three leap yet. But most of all, I worry about the bad thing that happened at school. I open my eyes wide to make the bad thoughts go away, but it doesn't make any difference. My mind plays back today like a film on a loop. Each time I see it, it's exactly the same as the first time. Every sight, every sound, every smell. It's bad because even though I know it's going to happen, I don't know what it means. Today, I got a text from the future. Okay, well in chapter two, Elle realises that the text from the future is um, called a predictive. And um, she knows this because in chapter three, we have a, a bit of backstory where um, Elle remembers the beginning of seventh year, which is the equivalent to year seven, where in her school, in Intercalary International, um, they, they have a, a visitor comes who knows quite a lot about time. And he also ends up being one of the key characters in the novel. So I thought it'd be a really nice opportunity to, um, to introduce him to you. Chapter 3, MC Squared. At the beginning of seventh year, a criminal came to our school. He was a skinny black boy with clumps of hair sticking out of his head like antennae. His eyes turned up at the edges and he had an infinity tattoo on his left hand which looked like a number eight sideways. He wasn't in school uniform because he was a criminal so his trousers and top were white with graffiti all over them. I tried to read what it said, but it gave me a headache. His name was MC Squared, the boy we'd see months later in the Time Squad video, but we didn't know that at the time. Mrs Siecla had given us investig investigative homework on MC Squared the night before, so we could ask sensible questions. She gave us a secret link and reminded us of our oath of secrecy. That's when I found out he was a leapling who committed lots of anachronisms. Normal bad people commit crimes in their own time, but bad leaplings steal things or kill people in the past, so it's harder to trace the crime. All these crimes are called anachronisms. MC Squared was nicknamed the Mixer of Chronology, but I didn't have time to find out what it meant because Grandma wanted me to fetch the comb and pomade. Mrs. Sietra smelled a perfume that day rather than pear soap. She had her ginger hair down to her shoulders rather than piled up on her head as usual and was wearing bright blue eyeshadow. I didn't like this. I kept thinking she was someone else who'd stolen Mrs. Sietra's voice. Now, seventh year, we are extremely lucky today. She was pacing up and down rather than standing still, which was really distracting. We have a very special visitor. I think I zoned out during her introduction, but the next thing I knew, everyone was cheering like he was a pop star. MC Squared blinked all the time. He blinked so fast you might not even notice. I think he was scared. I tried to hate him because he'd broken the law, but I felt bad for him because he was scared. And he spoke in rhyme, so it was more like a rap than a talk. To the power of two I deliver my apology, I committed intricate crimes against chronology. That word again, chronology. I now know it means the order that things happen. MC Squared was nicknamed the Mixer of Chronology because he sold things that were out of time. Like DJs who used to mash up records, so the words came out backwards and sounded like another language. But I didn't know that last year. The making of watches and clocks is horology. I stole the past so the present acknowledge me. And I remembered reading online he became an expert on clocks and watches. He would go back in time to find a clock that was worth lots of money and then bring it back to the present to sell it. 
Then he did the opposite. He stole modern watches and sold them to rich people in the past. He didn't make as much money that way round, but he liked to watch people do what big eyes in 1800. The wristwatch hadn't been invented yet. If you're in a mess, if you're in distress, send an SOS via SMS. Lots more applause. And Mrs C. Eckler was smiling from east to west. Thank you for that wonderful presentation, MC Squared. Seventh year have looked you up online, so I'm sure they have lots of questions to ask you. But before they do, could you tell us the story of your name? Yeah. He disappeared, reappeared on the spot, his whole body blinking. Big Ben whooped, the whole class started muttering in amazement, and my eyes went too big for my head. It was like leaping for a split second. How did he do it? When I was a kid, he said, I leapt before I could walk, for real. Too much energy with no place to go. Doc said ADHD and prescribed medication, but the meds didn't work, so I got sent specialist school to help me. One of my peer mentors said, You're a bomb ready to blast, Bar. Channel that energy, you'll go far. I put my energy into rhyme. When I started rapping, I leapt all over the stage, here, there, everywhere. There was this brother called himself Einstein after the genius professor that hatched nuclear energy. Einstein said, you ain't just MC, you're MC squared. He didn't just mean a rapping MC. He named me after the formula E equals MC squared. E's energy, M's mass, C's the speed of light. The most hyper MC on the planet. I've heard of the original Einstein. He had the best rhyming name ever. He wasn't a leaping with the gift, but he must have had one in his family to get that surname. MC squared is a brilliant name because it means lots of different things at the same time. Mrs C. Eckler thanked MC Squared. Now, seventh year, I know you have lots of questions. And of course they do have a lot of questions, so I'm going to fast forward to um, a point where Mrs C. Eckler has to interject. And she says to MC Squared, Could you say something about the work you do now? And then we fast forward again and MC Squared says, now, he said, like he was punching a hole in the present, I work for the Time Squad. I heard someone whisper, thought it was the Rhyme Squad. And Mrs. Yekla turned her head, but she couldn't see who it was. We fight crime on the timeline. Mostly respond to SOS texts, he continued. SOS is called for help. If an anachronism has been committed, usually someone's been attacked or their life's in danger. We get their ASAP. Most texts come from the future. Why? Jake again. There's no hope for that boy. There's been an upsurge of eco-crime since the millennium. Peeps start to realise they can get big cash from it. Easier to hide stuff in the future. You don't mess up history. You're less likely to get caught. Mostly smuggling. Meat, ivory, extinct animals, toxic waste, the odd murder. Murderers get life imprisonment. Ad infinitum. Don't mean 20 years means you're locked up till you drop down dead and they bury you in the prison vaults. We all did what big eyes. How can you work in that job when you used to be a criminal? Maria, and she didn't put her hand up. Sometimes she goes out of turn in a high jump competition, gets disqualified and swears in Portuguese. She hates rules. They gave me a choice. He looked round the room and everyone was holding their breath to see what he'd say next. Work for us or go young offenders unit. I made the right choice. I stood up. How old are you? Mrs. Sietla gave me another look. Fifteen and a bit. Lost count on my travels. We gasped. You're supposed to stay in full-time education till you're 18. I'm based in 2048. Different rules. If you've got talent, age don't matter. Mrs. Sietla cleared her throat as if to make an announcement. <clears throat> in term four, there'll be a leapling trip to 2048, where we'll have the chance to stay at the Time Squad Centre. Class noise. It will be the last opportunity before it moves years. As you know, the future is always in flux. But we can only take four pupils. You have to earn it. I'll be assessing you on effort the next two terms and make a selection based on that. 
it all went quiet. This 14 of us. Yes, Ben? A three second pause. Big Ben often pauses if you ask him a question, like he's translating it into English. It's the autism. You need to give him time to process. If you wanted to report a crime, he paused again, an anachronism, what number do we text? MC Squared scrunched his eyebrows again. Two zero zero zero, he said. Easy to remember, but text me now and your names so you've got time scored number on your memory and I got yours. He took a massive silver phone out of his bag. If you come next year, you'll get a chronophone can text past, present and future. Your 2020 should work normal. Mrs C. Eckler gave him another mega smile. It's usually against school rules to use phones in lessons, but this is a very special occasion. Please do as MC Squared says. I took out my phone, which is white, and renamed it 2020 in my head because I like the echo. Typed Time Squad and the number 2000. Then my name, letter by letter, E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, and pressed send. I could see Big Ben wanted to ask another question, but he didn't put up his hand. He sounded like he was going to cough. <laughs> but Mrs. Siekla could see as well and encouraged Big Ben to speak. If you've got a predictive, will you die? Mrs. Siekla cleared her throat. <clears> throat> MC Squared stopped blinking and raised his eyebrows at Ben. Leap's done his homework, he said. Predictives are rare, bro. Very rare. You won't die. Depends on context, not text. Know what a predictive is? There was a long pause before Big Ben answered. When your phone sends a text before it happens. Close, but it's not your phone. Someone types a text in the future to the past often a call for help. You get one, you've got to act on it. He looked at Big Ben for a long time before he nodded his head and smiled. Mrs C. Eckler was looking at her watch. MC Squared is available to sign autographs afterwards and you'll have the chance to ask him a question one to one if you didn't get a chance just now. I didn't get his autograph and I definitely didn't want to talk one to one with a criminal. It was noisy and I needed to go outside. Walking across the quad, I got out my phone, and already there was a message from Time Squad. MC Squared. OK, now, um, you might be wondering what a chronophone might look like. Well, it might look a little bit like this. Um, hello? Yep, 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 OK, OK, no problem. See you later. Um, basically, this is um, this is my idea of a chronophone, which is basically based on um, an old-fashioned, like an 80s or 90s brick phone, um, but but silver and kind of um, amazing because, of course, it can send text from past, present to future. So, what I thought would be nice would be to end on a short extract from chapter six, which is actually based in 2048. So, you, I would just want you to have a little taster of another futuristic invention. And um, so basically, Ellen, Ellen, her, um, her school friends go on the trip. They, they hold hands in what's called a chrono. They hold hands in a circle and um, they close their eyes and they all leap together. And, um, and basically, chapter, chapter six begins where they've arrived at the, the Time Squad Centre in 2048. Chapter six, Ferrari forever. One minute, 59 seconds says Big Ben. He was counting in his head, and I bet he's right, but it felt like half an hour. We're still holding hands. Mrs. Siekler told us we must maintain the energy to centre ourselves. I know if I move I'll be sick. The air is very warm for February, like the middle of summer. But the light rain is helping. It's good to be outside. We're in the Eco Play Park, where everything's made of trees and still looks like trees. If I didn't feel sick, I'd go on the swings. I love swinging. Before school, when I was in first year, Grandma took me to the park every day to calm me down when my body felt fizzy. One morning, I counted each swing up to a hundred, out loud, and Grandma was crying because she was so happy. I know that sounds odd, but she said they were tears of joy. I never used to talk very much, and she didn't know I knew my numbers. 
Afterwards she had to sit down on the bench to get her breath back. Everywhere I look there's trees. Some of them are like brown canes coming out of the ground with ruler marks on them. Mrs. Siecla sees me looking. They're bamboo, Elle. The fastest grow 90 centimetres a day. Some of the trees have trunks so large you could live in them. You could have one room on each floor and a spiral staircase going up. I think they're oak trees, which are hundreds of years old. I'd love to live in a real tree house. And there's palm trees too, lots of different kinds. It's the greenest place I've ever seen. Except for the glass building in the middle, which is the centre, it's like a tropical jungle. I wonder if they grow trees inside the centre, like in a glass house. That would be better than the pretend beanstalk in the cafe video. I could happily sit here forever if I didn't feel sick. I can hear birds singing and a strange noise, like the sound of a fast car approaching. But it's like someone turned the sound of the engine off, like the sound's invisible. And it's coming from the air. I slowly turn my head to see a lime green car descending in front of the centre. It's so green it hurts my eyes, but I can't stop them staring in amazement. I've always been car blind. Most cars look the same to me, but this is definitely a supercar. I never saw a flying car before, and certainly not a flying supercar. Big Ben lets go of my hand and starts shouting in noises rather than words. He's so excited. Big Ben can imitate different supercar noises brilliantly. His best impersonation is a Lamborghini Asterion, but it's always so loud I put my hands over my ears. Now I want to move my head to see what he's doing, but if I move my head I'll vomit, so I stay still. Mrs. Siecla squeezes my hand. Elle, are you okay? I'm scared to shake my head so I don't do or say anything. She squeezes my hand. Well done everyone. That went smoothly. We've arrived at the centre. Stop licking hands now, but remain seated. Heston, that's her husband, keep an eye on Ben. I can hear Big Ben whooping in the background. He's not just happy, he's ecstatic. I feel like I'm going to die of nausea, but very, very slowly turn my head in his direction. The lime green supercar has parked in front of the main entrance. Big Ben is running up and down, whooping and flapping his hands. It's obviously a very special car. The driver's door opens, but I don't see who gets out because, without warning, at that exact moment, I projectile vomit all over my suitcase. Well, that's the end of my reading. Sorry to end on such a horrible note. Um, thank you so much for listening. Thanks again to Writing on the Wall for inviting me to read. Um, enjoy the rest of the festival, have a great day, and enjoy reading The Infinite. Bye-bye. <laughs>